Morning, everybody. So I got a question for you before we get started today. When nothing happens, what's happening? Hi, everybody. And welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast. I am your host, Todd Conklin. How are you today? I hope all is well with you. That's always my hope. It's my hope for everyone, really, but especially for you today. I really feel it for you. I hope all is super, super well and things are grand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So today's podcast is interesting. You can probably tell from the beginning that I've become really fixated on something Eric Hallnagel talks a, a lot about. And at the Hop Conference this year, when he gave his keynote, this is pretty much what his keynote was about. And I know when I ask this question, when nothing's happening, what's happening, that the initial response I get from traditional safety people is complacency sets in or we get lazy or we get overconfident or we get comfortable. But I think actually that's um, uh, that's the answer that people think I want to hear. But I actually think that's not the right answer. I mean, of course, complacency sets in. That's Complacency is present all the time. That's not even a problem. But I actually am much more curious around this definition. And it's something James Reason said, and he said it a really long time. So Uncle Jim Reason, and if you don't know who James Reason is, pause now. That little gap was for you to pause and look up James Reason. But most of you are going to know who he is. He said this a long time ago. He said, safety is a dynamic non-event. In order for nothing to happen, for a system to be safe, a lot of people are doing a lot of work. That's kind of uh, paraphrased a little bit. I'm pretty sure I didn't quote it exactly. But that actually is probably the conversation we should be having and and should be having it a lot. We probably should have had it beforehand, he says, conjugating the word should as many times as he could. That idea is really powerful to the way we think about systems and reliability and safety because – A reliable system is not a system that's doing nothing. A reliable system is actually doing a lot. And that is, in fact, why the system's reliable. So that's what I want to talk about today. And I want to spend as much time as I can digging into this idea deeply. And so in order to do that, I think we probably ought to start the podcast if you're interested, well, this is a good place to talk about this. May 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Denver, Colorado, um, Bob and I are going to have a, an, an open workshop. It's a, it's a class that's available to anybody. If you can sneak away, it's a really good time to be there. And we've picked a, a, a nice little place to have the conference. And it, it's affordable so that it meets kind of all three tests. And that workshop will talk specifically about the first day really fundamentals um, and it kind of a deep dive into fundamentals, full day dive into fundamentals. The second day will focus almost entirely on operational learning, kind of uh, the, the, the gift that keeps giving, um, talking to the people who actually do the work, which is remarkable. And then the third day is a very, very deep dive in fatality prevention. And what you'll leave with, really for all three days, but the third day, you'll leave with a set of um, syllabi uh, to go out and actually take this message back to your company or your organization or whatever it is you do. Of course, every bit of information we have is yours. And we'll make sure before you leave that you have copies of everything so you can actually go out and work with your, your guys and gals and talk about these issues. The fatality stuff... It's probably – I feel bad. I probably should have had this meeting a while ago. But it's they're hard to coordinate, and so I wanted to get it set up. But that, that that's kind of neither here nor there. The topic today uh, is not that workshop, although you're more than welcome to come. The topic today is is what happens when nothing's happening. So let's uh, begin by talking about this idea of a dynamic non-event. It sounds kind of made up, doesn't it? I mean, (laughs) what's that mean? Non-event means nothing's happening. And dynamic means it's in constant motion. If you followed the podcast closely, and probably most of you have, and you know when we talk about uh, complex systems, 
We talk about the fact that complex systems are always in motion. And organizations are really more like complex systems than they are like linear systems. I wish organizations were like linear systems, but they're not. They're very complex. Organizations are constantly in motion. They're constantly doing something. Now, organizations exist to really create value, whatever that means, whether it's a product, a paper cup, or a, a ream of paper, or, or, or a new stove, or, or tires, or whatever it is you create. But organizations as a whole exist to create value. So families, in fact, exist to create value. And what they do is they create a a group of people who work in consort. They work together to to survive, right? And, And that's a big part of what happens. So we know organizations are constantly in flux. They're con- they're complex. They're constantly moving, and we know that organizations themselves can't be studied in a fixed state. Or they can be. I mean, you could take a picture, a snapshot. That's a metaphor of a, of an organization. But all that gives you is a study in retrospect in the past of what the organization looked like at the moment you took the quote unquote snapshot. So you have to look at organizations really in motion. So you're constantly asking questions like which direction is the organization vectoring? Which direction is the organization moving? Are we moving towards improvement? Are we moving away from improvement? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know why I said et cetera, et cetera three times. But you know what I mean. Blah, blah, blah would also have worked just perfectly there. That helps us understand organizations, at least at a basic level. You know, we could talk in great detail about this, but after a while it gets a little boring. And boring is not good. Boring is not good podcast. Boring is boring podcast. So then you get into the position where you start talking about the fact that if organizations are dynamic, then a dynamic non-event, in James Reason's idea, is that in order for nothing to happen, lots of things have to be happening. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if you think about your organization this way. Well, so here's my guess. is I'm guessing you probably – think about your organization this way or your system or, or whatever it is you manage. But my guess is, is that the rest of the people that exist in your value creating organization aren't thinking about it this way. In fact, there's this kind of weird phenomena. We, we tend to think that business units that um, are really, really effective have fewer problems, but that's not true. Organizations have problems. High-performing organizations have problems. Crappy organizations have problems. The difference is is that business units that um, are better actually handle problems better. And that's the idea that ultimately safety is not the absence of a negative. It's not the absence of an accident. Safety ultimately is the presence of capacity. And I talk about this all the time. I mean, you're, you're probably sick and tired of hearing me talk about it. But it fits in nicely with this idea of a dynamic non-event. That in order for success to happen, lots of things have to go right. And that takes us right back to a basic, 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 basic premise of what we do. And that is the belief, and I don't know how we got here, but the belief somehow that our plants or our facilities or our faculties or our systems or our organization is inherently safe and that people make it dangerous. When in fact, that could not be more wrong. Your plant is not inherently safe. Your plant is actually a big collection of hazards that are geographically co-located to provide the highest opportunity to injure or kill somebody that's available. If if I were going to plan a way to hurt people, it would look like the top of a petroleum vessel that's moving, I don't know, somewhere off the coast of Washington State. It's like a giant tripping hazard. It's its available and ready to hurt. It, it looked like a tugboat. A tugboat's got a million ways to pinch you, right? So your your facility is not inherently safe. In fact, what makes your facility safe are people actively creating safety in real time. That is James Reason's notion of a dynamic non-event. That's exactly what he means. And that is a powerful, powerful way to think about reliability because it moves you away from studying failure in order to describe success to a much more profitable way to look at the world, which is studying success 
in order to help predict potential failure modalities, ways the system can fail. That, I don't know why, but that is a way different way to look at the world than what we've traditionally done. And that approach, which is much more positive, really it it looks at success. What it looks at is normal. And it asks this question, how do I function normally without failure in order to create a system where I don't fail? Does that make sense? Because that question is a pretty important question. And you can think about it with your life. Like when you go to work every morning, what is it that allows you to get out of the house with all the stuff you need, including pants, right? Because pants are really socially important to wear. And down the road and in a car full of gas to the parking lot to eventually get into your office. What? How many things have to go right? And how many things do go right? And then the deep question is, is, well, how come they go right? And what are you doing to ensure that your commute to work is successful every single morning? That notion is really powerful. Because what it's telling us is, in really no uncertain terms, that what we have to do is be able to describe how our organization creates success, how our organization creates value, how our organization creates reliability. And when you start asking that question, it's kind of cool because now you can look at that question not based upon a tragic event, a horrible restorative opportunity where somebody's injured or, or dead or a plant has exploded, But now what you're looking at is what's going on when we're successful in order to be successful. So I did a meeting uh, not very long ago, actually, and it was with a big oil and gas company. um, And and they have a really, really, really good record of not killing people. I mean, they 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 don't kill people. And the meeting was really interesting because it started with this statement. Why is it we don't kill people? And and I think a less mature organization would probably freak out and say, well, oh, we're not going to talk about that. That'll jinx us. But in fact, that conversation with that group of very senior leaders was pretty valuable because what they talked about was they talked about essential controls and, and how they manage really failure before it happens. They talked about how they don't use punishment and blame but in fact, they, they've really leveraged the ability to learn as much as they can. And they talked about the fact that what they do is actually start jobs when the system has all the components that are necessary in order to be successful. Well, that conversation is James Reason's conversation of a dynamic non-event. Or, or better yet, that, that is Eric Hallnagel's definition of when nothing happens, what's happening. And that is really where our challenge is. Our big challenge is is that we have to build the discussion. We have to create the vocabulary, or or as Tanya would say at Chevron, we have to build the fluency into our conversation so that what we look at is what's present in order for us to be successful, not the very negative what failed in order for us to hurt people. So now we built a case, give or take some arguments there, but there was a pretty good little discussion on why it's important to understand and monitor success. And that challenge is a great one because there's way more success than there is failure. And so collecting data on success would be a, it'd be a big deal, a Herculean task, almost, dare I say it, impossible. I mean, you'd have to have giant, giant data sets, and you'd have to actually go out and monitor what was successful and measure it, but that'd be hard. What maybe is more profitable is understanding what systems are necessary when we build success. And, and one of the ways to do that is to talk to the workers and ask them when this job is good, 
when it's on time under budget, nobody's injured, high quality, high production, no environmental releases, you know, all the metrics we use to measure good, measure value, what systems are necessary in order for the system, for, for the, the process to be effective? What has to be present in order for us to do this job as effectively as we possibly can? And that actually allows us to build from an appreciative standpoint an understanding of not what will fail, but of what is necessary to succeed. And then from there, you would have to constantly ask the question, is this sufficient? So we're going to introduce the idea of necessary and sufficient, right? Because what's necessary over time will drift. And so then sufficiency becomes a really important question. Is this enough? Do we have enough? Have we thought of everything we can possibly think of? And, and what you now are really focusing on is what conditions must exist in order to create success while simultaneously thinking about what conditions could exist in order to create failure. And now you've doubled your data set you're not just looking for hazards and how they'll fail, but you're now looking for hazards and controls and how they'll succeed. And that actually, it really is kind of a force multiplier. It allows you to really change the conversation, but it also allows you to look deeper into data, into information about your plant or facility that um, you may have not looked at before, N not because you're a bad person, but because we simply take this for granted. We believe if nothing happens, then nothing's happening. And that's what we're trying to counter. When nothing's happening, something's happening, right? And what's happening is that all of our systems, our planning, our processes, our protection, our controls, our hazard identification, our training, our qualification, our adaption, all those things are effectively aligning so that we can do high risk work well and do it without um, consequence of failure. We may have failure, but what we manage is the consequence of that failure. That idea, my friends and neighbors, is really a powerful idea, and it's, and it's one that we can't spend enough time thinking about. But in order to think about it, we have to build this fluency. We have to build this discussion around what processes must exist for us to do work well. And so the idea that a, a business unit that is perfect has fewer problems or a process that never fails must be simple, those ideas have to be directly confronted. We have to push back on those and say, what is it that makes our highest performing team our highest performing team? What conditions exist, what components exist in that team that allows them to move to this level of high performance. And I think what you'll find, and let me take that back, I know what you'll find is an environment that all of a sudden is much different to study, to understand. And between us chickens, it's a lot more satisfying and it's more fun. It's depressing to go out and look at failure all the time. It's depressing to look at how systems fail. The challenge then is we have to study success. And we have to think about that studying of success kind of in a couple ways. So the big issue here is when nothing bad happens, in the traditional sense, there's nothing to measure. So when nothing's happening, what's happening? Well, what's happening is there's an absence of a null set. Look that up if you don't know what that is. That's twice you have to look stuff up. This is a hard podcast. I'm sorry for all the homework. Sorry. But because there's not a null set, because there's nothing to measure against, then there's nothing to measure. Wink, wink, nod, nod. There's tons to measure. I think we have to change two things. One is our definition of what success is. So we move to a more safety differently understanding of success. Success is not the absence of accidents. It's the presence of capacity. That's the one I use all the time. That's important. The second thing is I think we have to look at information differently. And we have to think about the fact that really what we want is a collaborative environment that understands how to manage normal variability 
that's constantly detecting and correcting. That, that's what we want. The data is not that. The data actually becomes the, the food. The collaboration is the, is the meal. Well, let me say that differently. The data is the ingredients. The collaboration is the lasagna. And that, actually, I'm, I'm super proud of that metaphor right there. I, I broadcast over. That, that's, that's how we want to think about information. We gather data to actually make collaboration more effective. We gather information so that when we collaborate, we have a better idea of what we're working with in order to bring sort of all parts together the management, the planners, the engineers, the maintenance guys, the operators, the techs, the, the, the regulators, the enforcement people. All those people come together in order to create reliability. And systems that are really reliable tend to sort of lean on collaboration. They lean on this, this collective grouping um, in order to create that success. That ultimately is where we're going. When nothing's happening, what's happening? Well, what's happening is a lot of people in a collaborative fashion are constantly collecting information from the system and in real time detecting and correcting. The conditions that have to be present in order for success to happen are controls, planning, all those things. They're working. And when they work... Nothing happens. Want me to say that again? When they work, nothing happens. That's the podcast. It's a discuss. It's just it's a tiny little discussion, but it's really something I'm thinking about a lot, and I need for you to think about it as well because I need your input. I need to know what it is you're thinking and how this hits you. That'll help me a lot. Stay tuned if you get a chance to come to Denver and join us. We'd love to have you the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of May. It's a great time to be in Denver, and we'll have more of these types of discussion. Keep listening to the podcast and tell your friends. Subscribe, rate us, but only rate us good, dang it. That seems to make some kind of difference to somebody. I don't know who, because I, I really don't know who. Until then, my friends, learn something new every single day. Have as much fun as you possibly can. And for goodness sakes, be safe. around